Last week, we looked on the general, um, the general nuggets for someone to, to apply for a scholarship. We looked into the, the general letter of application. We looked on the fact that um, there are many organizations in the world, not just Jamaica, who would like to give scholarships. And there's a big takeaway that I was, I was talking to my, my daughters just yesterday about. In the Adopter Youth Foundation, last year we had our inaugural scholarship um, offerings for tertiary level students, as well as for um, high school students. We were prepared and happy and ready to give away free money to persons who would apply and say, please help me with this. We had to extend the deadline for the scholarship because of the lack of uptake. We had the money there. We wanted to give it away, but we didn't see anybody saying, um, Please give me. <clears throat> Matter of fact, we didn't give a scholarship to high school last year. Nobody asked us for money. So we were not saying you need to have A's or you need to be an outstanding athlete. We weren't asking for that. And that is one of the reasons we're having these sessions this evening. There are a lot of help available all over the place. But unfortunately, there's a mindset. One, people think that, boy, I have to be getting straight A's to get a scholarship. A lie, <laughs> let me tell you. That is not true, right? Secondly, they're thinking that if, if I am not dying of hunger, my belly, my back, dirt poor, then I can't get a scholarship. That is not true. Some of the big scholarships, as Chris said last week, some of the big scholarships, like the hundreds of thousands and million, million plus scholarship, persons look on and say, whoa, you're not going to get that. So let me not even try. And what will happen is a few persons apply for them, and the, the organization made this decision based on a few. We want to help more persons access the money, get the money, get the scholarships. But first of all, you need to deal with your mindset. Tell yourself that you can get multiple scholarships. Tell yourself that you are good enough and you have what it takes to get this financial aid. From the Adopt New Foundation perspective, we're just one foundation that is looking to help out. There are many other entities like us who are looking to, to help out. But the persons we want to help don't seem to have the confidence in themselves to say, yes, I will step forward, right? So in these workshops, it's very important for a person to ask question. If, you're, if you don't feel that confident to come on a mic or on camera, no problem. Put it in the chat. Matter of fact, start right now. Right Before I introduce Chris, if there, there are any particular area that you want us to look on. My dear child, listen to me just any, any question that, that you have, put it in the chat. And let us, let us address it this evening. As I said last week, we're not looking to make a presentation necessarily. We're looking to make an impact. What is it that we can do to help you, right? I must apologize for, for Chris not being on just yet because he has a, a, a little emergency with his son but he should be on in a few minutes. So anything at all you want 
us to address, start putting it in the chat so that we know in the workshop this evening, because it's not a long workshop, right? It's not a long workshop, but we want to be relevant. So, okay. All right, we have our first question in the chat. Um, we're we're going to bookmark that, of course, and, and deal with it. Keep them coming, keep them coming. There is something else I want to, to share with you. Um, the Adopter Youth Foundation is always looking to help, always looking to impact. We want to be relevant. And for the last few days, we have been giving away credit to persons who fill out our questionnaire with feedback on um, what you what you think. Uh, here's this. What do you think um, can help make our workshop on Fridays better? So, so I'm going to put the questionnaire. If you fill out the questionnaire you get a $100 credit, whether Flow or Digicel. So here is a questionnaire. How do you get the credit? Just send a screenshot to the, the WhatsApp group, the AYF WhatsApp group. If you're not already in the WhatsApp group, you can send a screenshot to this number and we will send the credit to you right away. The, the Google form takes about two minutes, three minutes to fill out. What we want to do, we want to tailor all that we're doing to help you, to help a wide cross-section of, of, of youth. So fill out the question here, send a screenshot to the AYF WhatsApp group. If you're not in a WhatsApp group, send it to, to that number on the screen and we will send you a $100 credit. So just encourage you and say thanks for participating, okay? As I said, tonight won't, won't be long, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand over to Chris right now. Some persons would not have been on the call last week. So let me do a quick introduction to our presenter this week. This is the second week in a two-part presentation on getting that money through scholarships, the scholarship workshop. Our presenter this evening is Christopher Grant. He has been, he is the CEO of Scholarship Jamaica. It is a not-for-profit um, entity that seeks to get scholarship information to persons who need it and coach persons how to apply for scholarship how to win scholarship, how to keep scholarship. Okay, so um, Chris, you're you sharing screen? Uh, there you are, right? So I'm gonna hand over right now to Chris, who's taking us into part two of our workshop on getting that money for scholarships. But before you start, Chris, I have a few questions that I promise that in tonight's session, we would cover based on, on what is asked. So the first question, Chris, are you, are you there? Let me yes, hear you. Yes, I'm here. All right, yes, wonderful. The first question um, is from Sir Morris. Is it true that the career scholarship is not applicable to medical and law students? I don't know if you have that detail. No, that's that's right? not true. That's not true. So the career scholarship is offered to various to different categories of students. However, there is one, the name of the the, the SEEK, S-E-E-K, the career as S C S E E K scholarship is open to all fields of study at whatever level, whether first degree or or, or, or postgraduate and it's open to persons to study in Jamaica and overseas. All right, I hope that answer your question. If you, have, if you have a follow up question, you can always drop it in the chat for Chris. The next question is from Edwina Smith. Are there scholarships for students 
in teacher scholarships. Um, I'm supposing you're saying students who are, who are in teacher's college. You know of any, Chris, for teacher's yes. college? Yes, yes. Teachers, uh, students pursuing their teaching degree, they're wholly, I can't say it anyway, they're enough, enough scholarship <laughs> for teachers. If you're, if you're yeah, going to teacher's college, your best friend is supposed to be the Ministry of Education. So the Ministry of Education, they have upgraded your website. You go on a website, you can put in scholarship or you just go through the different icons and you see where they have the scholarship section. You are able to apply for um, at least eight separate categories. You have the Jamaica scholarship. You have uh, seven other categories that is open only to teachers. Additionally, we go back now to the, 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 the Career Scholarship Program. They offer one category for teachers. You go to the Grace Kennedy Scholarship, they offer for teachers. And all local, major local scholarship program like NCB, the Grace, the, the Sajikor, the JN, they all offer scholarship for students to study teaching, for, to complete their teaching degree. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Um, next question is from Sanik. Sanik is asking, uh, good evening, do you give scholarship specifically for nursing? Well, tonight's session is not about us giving scholarship, it's about us sharing with you how you can get scholarship from different places and uh, I can ask Chris now, do you know of scholarship for nursing studies? Yes. So one lucrative, one of the lucrative scholarship for nursing students is a Jamaica Cuba bilateral scholarship program where students are able to go to Cuba to, um, to study nursing and other, um, what you call it, another medical uh, field of study. Um, uh, that is the most lucrative one that the, the scholarship usually open between February and March. Other nursing scholarships would be under the category of general. So whenever you have, you're applying for scholarships and it's a, oh, it's a general scholarship, that means you can apply. For U.S. students, there are various scholarships offered for U.S. specific nursing program. For other nursing programs, I would refer the persons to the other general scholarship program from a careers, from a betting game and latches commission, from a Jamaica floor mills, and from your credit union. Usually credit unions, their scholarships are open to whatever field of study. I'm not able, because these questions I didn't get before, and so I'm not able to give specific name for some of them, but <laughs> always start with your institution. Wherever you're applying for, to do this course, Find out from them if they have any, because if I, as a, as a donor, I'm going to approach the school and let them know that I'm offering the scholarship. So if you start with the school, they can give you different um, op options. Okay. <clears throat> um, a question from Denny Mullins. I study abroad in Guyana, and I'm wondering if there are any scholarships that I'm eligible for. In Guyana? <laughs> Yeah. If, so the one you'll be, uh, uh, one of them would be the same career as again, the SEEK, because they are fight to go overseas. Um, Betting Gaming and Latches Commission, their award is like between 50,000 and 150. They offer it for persons to go overseas. If this person is studying in the field of disaster management, environmental protection, bio, um, insurance, they can apply to the CCRIF. Um, the CCRIF is open to Caribbean students studying in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, UK, US, Canada. CCRIF, Caribbean Catastrophic uh, something. Okay, make a note of that. Um, CCRIF, yeah. All right, I see Samar Fasey says, what is the general time period for which most scholarships are available? open all right so i i'm gonna hope that um face wasn't at the last week 
I, I, I assume that as well. I assume that as so, well. Because if that if face was at it, I don't feel good that I did a good job. So um scholarships are usually open from January 6 and close in the, the end of July. However, you will find that most scholarships will be available to you between March and May. That is when everybody just open the books and offer it. And that's the time when a lot of persons get overwhelmed and cannot choose. So we encourage persons to start early. So if you're a UE student, you should start asking your, your, the, the UE about the UE Open Scholarship. That's usually the first one. Today we post on our Instagram page, the Positive Jamaica Foundation Scholarship, which is that's the Prime Minister, Andrew Ones, his foundation, they, their scholarship is open now. We post it up. So if you check our Instagram page, Scholarship Jamaica, you will see it. So now is the time, but um, April, May, you're going to find that most awards are open. So CCRF is Caribbean Catastrophic Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> I see I got a screenshot from, from Morris. Uh, I think this is Tayon Morris. You would have received your credit for filling out the, the, the survey. Thank you very much for participating. All right? Let me look at the next question in, in the list. Uh, you, good night. You spoke last week about a calendar of all available scholarships. When would we be able to get it? And do we have to pay the calendar? No, no, no. So that's when you dig yourself in a ditch and then you're going to have to find your way out. So I, I made mention of it because I realized it's a, a very good, um, it would be a very good tool for persons. So that's something I'm working on currently. It wouldn't be available before the end of March, February because by the end of February, we would have had an idea of the different awards that will be opening because what we do, we contact. Um, donors and we confirm if they're offering and if so when it will be available so we don't want to estimate too much so it won't be available until mid-February end of February we have 28 days um, everything we do at Scotch Jamaica is free yeah we information free <laughs> if when we do offer scholarship it's free so it's not it's going to be free of course and it will be uh, something that will be published so you can download and keep it and hopefully because what we're doing is free. We hope that persons who benefit can also share the information with us. Yes, the last part is very important, you know. When you have benefited, let everybody else know, your friends, your relative, so that they can benefit as well. We're not looking at anything else but to improve the life of people. All right, the next question is from Ranifa. Can you talk about the Science Teacher Scholarship? You have a specific science teacher scholarship, Chris? All right, so um, uh, the, the specific science teacher scholarship is going to come from the donors who offer scholarships for STEM. So last week, I uh, made mention of NCB. NCB Foundation has this massive movement in um, science, technology, engineering, and math. So for the STEM awards, the Ministry of Education does it, and the the Ministry of Science, Technology, that ministry, M-S-E-T, yeah, the Ministry of Science and Technology, they offer yeah. scholarships for STEM students. And as a science teacher, you would fall in that category. So STEM scholarship, science, technology, and um, engineering and math, not only opens to persons who are, are skilled in the area, working in the field, but also to persons who teach. All right, I just shared the, the link for MSET and the ministry that Chris is talking about. You can check their website and thing. Our next question is from Theon Morris. Are there any scholarship tailored for medical students? So I think I would have answered that earlier. Yes, the biggest and the most lucrative medical scholarship is the scholarship that's offered by the Ministry of Finance 
through the bilateral agreement with Cuba. So the Cuba Jamaica Bilateral Scholarship Program, which is managed by the Ministry of Finances Scholarship and Assistant Unit. Make them your friend, Hero Circle. Go down there, not the door. You can visit and they can show you a list of stuff that they have. You can visit in person. That is the most lucrative um, medical scholarship program. Additionally, if you're attending UWE, and I, I, you might hear me talk about UWE. I am a UTEC past student, but UWE has the most um, effective scholarship program. When you look on your website, where they categorize it, if you're a UWE student, UWE offer that. So you would visit the UWE website and you would just select your, 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 um, your field. Other um, scholarship would also go back to general scholarships. Like I know medical field is very expensive. So like the seek million dollar, $1.5 million scholarship would be for you, um, Grace Kennedy and the Giselle Foundation. Those are just some examples. Thanks, Chris. Uh, the next question, <clears throat> what would be the best scholarship for students studying law? The best scholarship for students studying law is the one you receive. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> but um, unfortunately, locally, most scholarships are either in STEM or business administration. Tasty, the same tasty part where you go out there and eat. It's a tasty uh, company itself, tasty, I think Tasty Jamaica Limited. They offer a law scholarship. But if you want to think about law, think about law firms, think about the ministry that deals with like the, the, the Ministry of National Security. So think about the Ministry of National Security, think about all these law firms in Jamaica and the different companies who have a legal department. So most um, publicly traded companies in Jamaica, they usually have a law firm for them, a law department. When I used to work at COK, they had a law department. So you reach out to these organizations that you know that has these, um, whether they have, whether, reach out to the law firm, they're gonna be the best source of your scholarship. And there's something tonight we're gonna cover before we get um, um, a special guest to speak to you guys, is to reach out to them in writing officially, like introduce yourself and ask for the scholarship. For legal and medical students, most persons not gonna just run to you and say, yo, see a degree, see a scholarship here, because those uh, fields are, the, to, to study in those fields are very expensive. So they want, the, 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 the sponsors in these fields are gonna wait for you to come to them and then they're gonna look and see that it's an opportunity to present themselves as giving back to the community or it's an opportunity for them to invest in a future employee. So I hope I didn't beat around the bush, but I give you, but the information I just said is helpful. So Tasty, um, Jamaica Limited offer a law degree, law scholarship and other law firms. A matter of fact, one of the, um, the our Adapa Youth um, Foundation members who I hope will be speaking tonight. She said she can't speak on camera. She received a scholarship and she's studying law. So maybe she can give an insight on that also. <clears throat> All right, um, Chris, I'm gonna hold the other questions for now and allow you to go into your thing and then we'll take some more later on. That's okay? Yes, that's, that's awesome. All right. So, okay, so I can go ahead? Yeah, man, go ahead. Yeah, man. So thank you guys for joining again tonight. You know, um, I, I find pleasure in answering the questions because it made no sense for me just be here talking, 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 not knowing that persons are, are benefiting. And I secondly want to big up my one of my special guests tonight is Zane Hedram, the big man, former, um, former GC Foster College Student Union President, YouTuber, influencer. Um, scholarship pioneer, uh, win millions of dollars. You will be, I'll be giving him a chance this evening to um, just to share his experience in um, his scholarship interviews because we're not only want to give you guys some, we're not only just want to give you information, but want to give you some experiences. I also want to big up Roche Gordon. 
she will be um she's our social media manager and she will be giving you guys an insight on how she went about winning millions or so so it's a it's a group thing this evening but let me just go i must first apologize my slides are never their most attractive but what I try to do with my slides is that the information that's on it, you can, if you write it down, you can be helpful to you. And I'm limited in the, I'm using my tablet and I'm limited in the use of presenting my PowerPoint because it seems as if I didn't pay for the PowerPoint software. So even when I share my screen, I'm not able to present it the way I would like to. Don't worry, but, Chris. Uh, um, this week, I've seen it with other people presentations, so it's not you. <laughs> oh, all right. So, so not, not what I try to put on presentation mode, let's work with it. All right, good. So feel free to ask me the question. This evening, what I'm going to try to do is just to um, present to you guys this strategy that I work for me, and it has worked for a lot of students I've worked with. You realize that most times the scholarships that you want you may not uh, be qualified for, or they may have closed, or you just didn't get a chance to apply, or you there's not enough. So we suggest that you start reaching out to persons, individuals, organizations, agencies, presenting yourself and asking, you are big some money. So you're basically presenting the idea to them to say, listen, man, this is my situation. I would appreciate if you guys can help. So this is all I'm presenting tonight, because at the end of the day, if you don't apply for no scholarship, if you don't get no scholarship, you still have the, the right to send out a letter, make a phone call and solicit it. Because them say, hey, you have part one fire, you know, so you need to go there and look good for the fire. So this is what I'm presenting this evening. So I'm gonna just show you uh, my, um, my supposed PowerPoint. So as I say, the aim of this is not for prettiness, but it's to um, just to give any information. Uh, you guys, I would say, make a note. But if not, all the information I'll be presenting is from my from the website, Scholarship Jamaica. So as I try to open this bad boy, so you guys can see it. All right. So right now it's it's delaying. All right. Um, okay. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yes, I can we see. Can. Them. Yes, we can. Oh, word up. All right. So let's get the show on the road. Uh, apologies again. So, out. Can you? All right. Out to seek scholarship assistance. So last week we talked about you. The scholarship is already there. And you're applying. This week we're saying. Go out there and find the money for yourself. That is what I want. If, if one thing you guys get from this two week um, seminar is that you have the ability to go out there and get the money, like ask fee, your neighbor employer. So right here, I'm gonna say, and this is a script I went hard this week, guys. I, I typed up my presentation. So here we go. Seeking scholarship assistance to cover the cost of your education is not limited to applying for the known um, offered scholarships, the NCBs, the Digicels. Expert scholarship winners like Zane, who is going to speak to you later. Uh -uh. Um, expert scholarship winners make education funding their full time job. As such, in this presentation, we will be introducing some unique strategies on how to seek scholarship assistance from the not so common sources. All right. When you are considering seeking help, counselor reaching out to the known scholarship donors. So yes, NCB offers some scholarship. It could be the case where you didn't realize till after it closed, or it could be the case that 2020, 2021, they offer only STEM, but you are a, a doctor or you are a lawyer, lawyer, law student. And you're like, listen, what about me? You have the right to reach out to NCB and say, yo, what about me? So this is how you go about doing that. So yes, they're gonna tell you that, oh, well, these are what we're offering, but you're presenting yourself that, hey, I am aware that this is the, the offer for 2021. However, this is my situation. And I would like to, I'm here by seeking assistance to fulfill my tuition needs, all right? So counselor reaching out to the known scholarship donors. 
all right? It could be a case where the awards were closed or you may not be qualified for the said scholarship. For instance, the Jamaica Energy Partners, they're offering to people who live close to their, um, their plant. You don't live there, you're in St. Thomas, you've come from Trinity Ville like me, but you still wanna present yourself to say, listen, I am aware you're only offering to people who live in Arborview, Windward Road, Arbor, um, Old Arbor and stuff. I live in Trinityville. I'm in need. Can you assist me? 99% of the time, they won't be able to give you the same amount of assistance that they give to the, the, the current scholarship winners, but they can say, listen, usually we have 100,000, but in your case, we'll consider offering 50. Or worst case, they say, we won't be able to do it this year. However, for our next scholarship round, we will be opening it up to persons in your situation. So look on this opportunity, not just for yourself. If you don't get it this time, you're gonna get it next time or somebody else will benefit from it, all right? Additionally, this strategy is a means of introducing the funding idea to the potential donor. For instance, this is an example I will always use because it is real. When I was a work experience student at Seaford I, I went to uh, NCD branch in Mark Bay, big up everybody who worked there. And at the end of my time, I went to the manager and I asked for assistance to pay for my CXC at the time. That's in like about 1998. And that in me, it, for, for, when I went to the manager to ask for assistance, I was introducing the idea. So who knows, maybe after I left 98, the other students who went after me, they had it in mind that when they, those students, if they excel on what they were doing, they were able to offer those students the same help as they did to me. So look on this as introducing the idea to them. They have never thought about it. And in, when, in introducing the idea, you know, you tell them little benefits, which you're gonna get to early, um, shortly. Actively seeking tuition assistance is easier than applying for some active scholarships. When you apply for a current scholarship, say like the, the NCB one, there are set scholarship requirements. When you are presenting the idea to them, you are creating the, the requirement. You are telling them your situation, the help that you're looking. So you have more control in it. So when you present your letter, you drop a phone call or a follow up with an email, it's easier than you applying for one that they already set the um, they already set the standard. You are creating the standard for your 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 scholarship right now. In that your effort in submitting a convincing request for financial help will showcase your ability to be a qualified scholarship recipient. It is your interview before the interview. So I'm reading from my thing, and you see what I'm saying there. This is literally because when they read your letter you know, and they see the email and they see your call to follow up, they're saying that, yo, this person is showing a level of maturity that I would like to associate my organization with. So you, you one, you create your own standard and two, you did the interview before the interview. So when they reach out to you, you know, they're gonna ask, you know, what, how can they go about doing it? So you are literally creating a standard for the scholarship that they will be creating for your fellow students and yourself later on. When considering the sources of your scholarship funding, you should first have answers to the following. All right, how much money do I need? You can not come to me and ask me for money, ask me for help, you pay your tuition and you don't know how much you need, you understand? So what you do, when you send that scholarship request letter, which we're gonna show you a sample shortly, you attach your, um, your what do you call it? Your, 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 the, the thing you get from the school, like the tuition, you print it out and you attach it. You print out your, um, your, G, your, your, your last um, test scores and you attach it. You print out your ID, you attach it. So you're basically sending a package to them. You know, when you send it to them, they don't need to call you and ask you for any more information. This is what we talk about, you're creating a standard. Do they have funding to fulfill the tuition? Meaning, you walk and you look, you see that, um, there's a, 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 say, a gas station close to where you live. You, obviously, you see them at the good business. Come on, man. You see, the business is booming. So you're going to go and, and seek help. But if you see something, you see, close out sale, 
And it's not one of those places where every week they have a closeout sale. This may be a genuine closeout sale. You know, really, you know that you might have difficulty getting from them. You, you, you pass Constant Spring Road and you see Phil, Phil's hardware. When you look over Phil's, bro, there is always people there waiting. They do businesses booming over Phil's, especially during COVID. So you know, so you want to drop Phil's a, 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 a letter, but you can want to find out who is the HR manager. Bear in mind that most companies, if you're not going to send it to the manager or the owner, you want to reach out to like HR department or the, the customer service department. That's how you do it. Or the accounts, because our accounts deal with the money. Um, why would they offer a scholarship to you? So in the letter, you need to, you're not just asking for the money. You're stating what you're doing, right? You're stating the field of study. So you send it to Phil's, uh, Phil's hardware. You, 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 you state in there, say, you could be an engineering student, you could be a finance student, and you, you show that you could volunteer there on your, when, when, you, when you're out of school, um, where you could be an, an employee, you will be a spokesperson for them. Those are your three examples of how you can present yourself because you asked me for something you know, in business. When I just started Scholarship Jamaica back then, 2010, it was Next Move Jamaica. I did a presentation to the, the chairman and CEO of uh, Musan, which is um, P.B. Scott, Paul B. Scott. And at the time, Dr. Nigel Clark, who is now the Minister of Finance, was their, their CEO. I presented to them. And at the end of the presentation, I, um, I think P.B. told me that, okay, this is a great idea. How will it benefit us? And he went further to tell me that, listen, in business, there is no charity. So even though you have companies doing stuff for the community, they're doing it and they're benefiting. So in anything you do, there is no charity. So if you're going to come to me and you ask me for some money, you need to present to me how I am going to benefit. All right. How can I convince them that investing in me is worth the effort and that we just cover that? What can I offer in return for the scholarship investment? We just cover that. Volunteer, future employee, spokesperson. Um, yeah. Um, uh, may, you could even offer to maybe even bring customers to them or something to that effect. Just an example. How can I present myself or proposal? You're going to do a 15-page proposal? No, we say you write a letter. You attach, your, 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 you attach a reference. This is where we'll come back to last week and you attach a reference or a slash recommendation letter where somebody, with, uh, whether the principal, somebody from your school, a pastor, somebody can write to attest to what you are, what you are presenting yourself. You attach your GPA report. You attach a copy of your, your, your um, the invoice you get from your school. So this is how you present yourself. You send it, you realize within a week you're not getting a response. You drop an email to follow up. Or you make a phone call and introduce yourself and present it because sometimes these companies get the emails and stuff, but because they have other platform fire, they don't really jump to it. So it's you now because you have the platform fire to just remind them. All right. And remember, guys, don't be a stranger. Drop your question in the in the chat and we get to it. So just gonna run through this. Some unusual sources, meaning places you can um you can look to send these, uh, this letter. So unusual sources of scholarship assistance can be very lucrative as they are only available for those who seek them out. Some unusual sources of scholarships are the church, we we'll cover that, your member of parliament, your employer or your parents' employer, wherever you go for work experience, wherever you volunteer, whether it's at the library, in a youth club, um, whether, whether, whether you go volunteer at an established company, your sports, police, and other youth clubs, rotary clubs, business in your community, or your neighbor. You must know your neighbor. If you have a, always have a good relationship with your neighbor anyway. But if you know that yo, your neighbor is in a position that, not that you have for some people business, but you really see that, yo, Benjamin Bima, maybe he can help me out. He already know my situation. You reach out to your neighbor. Our local celebrity or opinion leader, so like in the chat, we have a lot of celebrities. Thanks to social media, we have influencers on Instagram, we have influencers on YouTube. Those people bring a little cult, a little, you know, a little respect. And if you know any artists, you're not just gonna, 
And when I say artists, I mean entertainers. You, 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 you present yourself like this, who knows? They'll be able to assist, all right? We're moving on. And I call this the assistant pitch process, APP. Keep that in your mind. What's the APP? The assistant pitch process entails the steps of contacting and selling your funding idea to the prospective donors or sponsors of your tuition cost. You see me? So you what's your APP? So when we come on and some other time we say, yo, you, you, somebody come to me and they say, oh, all these scholarships are done. What should I do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to like, yo, what's your APP? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe later on donors will be asking you that. You understand? So we suggest doing the following, all right? <clears throat> so here it is. So this is a sample scholarship request letter. This is the meat of the matter. As, uh, and this is on our website, right? Scholarship Jamaica, if you go on Scholarship Jamaica and you put in scholarship request letter, boom, you will see it. Um, you guys, I assume everybody know how to write a letter, right? I just have here the name of the scholarship committee or donor, the name of the company, the address, you know, re-application for. If there's a name scholarship, you can use it, or you just say application for tuition funding or application for a scholarship, something like that. And I say, always feel free to reach out to us when it comes to this. Reach out to somebody you know can write, who can help you. I use their name, head of scholarship committee or their manager, HR manager. When I'm looking job, when I was, used to be in the, 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 the working, trying to find a job, they say you try to find out the name of the person and you address it to them. Boom, paragraph one. And this is just a draft, guys. This is just to give you an idea. And this is available in, on our website. And also everything, the same thing I'm presenting, I can email it and share it. Well, our DAPA Youth Foundation Committee will be able to email and share it when necessary. And we are trying to be a source, your source, to, to equip you to, with this information, all right? So paragraph one, we suggest you're, you're, you know, you're, you're right. I am submitting the application for a scholarship. If there's a name, you put it. Or if you want to use another term, you're submitting the application for funding to pay for your tuition, to further my education. What are you studying? You understand? Jump to the point. I have studied for two years, or this is, I'm pursuing my first year. Name of the school and require financial assistance to complete my, whatever the degree is or whatever level of study. I have worked part-time, if that's your case, in a customer care center for the past two years, or I have volunteered. I have volunteered with Adapa Youth Foundation for the past two years as a social media manager, stuff like that. This is just a draft. This is all you put it together. And wish to work in the field of engineering sustainability. However, I need a degree to advance my fees. This is an example, but we always say, depending on who you're sending it to, you have to modify it. Because if you're sending it to, say, a NCB, and you know NCB concentrate on STEM and finance, you want to make sure that's the field you're studying. As a teacher, you send this to like your member of parliament, yeah, man, because them get the constituency fund money and you just say why you why you're teaching where are you going to go so as you're seeing paragraph one you're introducing yourself you're telling them what your your plans are and your current situation and this is why last week we talked about being a volunteer if you don't have a job you need to be a volunteer because some way somehow you can't be home just sitting and and, and, and tweeting so if you don't have a job, you need to be a volunteer. And even if you have a job, you need to volunteer. Boom. Paragraph two. Spent the last two years of high school volunteering in my community, blah, blah, blah. Name the wherever you're there, wherever you live. And gave, and I've gave, gained a lot of experience in the field. What field? You mentioned the field. I've won several awards for volunteer service. If you haven't, you don't need to say it. Teaching and community cleanup activities. If you were in the church and you did community outreach, that's where you put it. My goal is to work to have an impact on my environmental issues. That is for somebody who may be involved in environmental studies. You may be doing, um, so you're doing microbiology. But if you're doing, if you're a, a teacher, 
what is your goal? You want to improve the, the level of education in the community, just an example. But this, I went in depth because most people, like for the NCB, you know, it, it, you know, they talk about STEM, but you don't have to be like this. One of the most profound experiences of my life was a trip I took to Riverton City Dump and witnessed the lack of environment. So this is me going in depth, like, yo, I am serious about my environment, all right? So uh, this claim, I never really send this to anybody to apply, so I can't say, but this is how you put it together. It, paragraph three, if I am fortunate enough to receive this scholarship, this is where you're going to tell them how it's going to benefit them. I will finish my degree to qualify for a job in a company that promotes electrical engineering sustainability in their business, et, et, business ethic. Um, this is just going personal. This is It's always good to make it personal. Um, but this is also where you would tell them that you, you're willing to volunteer as a you're willing to be a volunteer for the organization, maybe as a, for the PR, marketing, um, just to be a spokesperson or to volunteer in a specific department and you stay at home many hours a week, stuff like that. So when you get specific like that, it shows that you're more serious. And then paragraph four, which is the last one, thanks for the consideration. So this, they tell you where you attach and you leave your contact information. So if you look at this, so those persons who still write, um, those persons who still write um, job application letter, you will see that it's somewhat similar to applying for a job. So that's basically it. I wanted to just get to the meat of the matter because we have, we have at least yeah, one person. Yes. Yeah, well, tight on time. So. Um, for the speakers, I'm going to ask them to probably speak for two minutes maximum. Yeah. So first, I just want to bring in uh, Zane Ejam. He's a YouTuber, scholarship winner, former GC Foster College um, uh, president. I'm sure there's a lot more to say, Zane, but I would just like to just come and just give a look at synopsis of your experience with the interview and what is expected. I know you're mute. Yeah. Right. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. We're hearing you. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Thank you again, Chris, for the opportunity to come and share. And I really appreciate it. And I absolutely like sharing, you know, my experiences um, with other students, you know, to basically have them getting what I actually had received while applying for scholarship, just the same. All right, so pretty much as it relates to the interview aspect of things, right? So it for me personally, first thing first, I would say work on your confidence. All right, so one, you know that you're going to get an interview um, for a scholarship. Work on your confidence, right? Believe in yourself, right? Believe that, hey, you know, you can do it and then go ahead and practice on your delivery, all right? If you have a friend, if you have a mentor, anyone in your arsenal, you know that you're going to get interview practice. If you, if you feel like you have jitters, if you feel like you're going, to, you're going to be shy, right? Put yourself in a situation to really go beyond those jitters, all right? Um, number two, prepare. No. Read the scholarship donors, right? You want to research about the donors, right? You want to have an understanding of, all right, what, what have they done? What have the impact? What are the impacts that they have basically? Um, what are some of the impacts they would have made in the community, right? Um, they, what, what, what are they? What, 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 what's the what is their purpose? You understand? What is their mission? What is it that they're doing? All right. So you want to have an understanding of who the scholarship donors are so that when they ask you in the interview, you are readily available to answer. All right. Um, some questions, Chris, that they would have asked you. So first thing first, you may why I say you should basically work on your confidence because in, in more cases than one, 
right? You will then understand that, all right, you may book up on several persons inside of the interview. You may see, it, luckily, when I got interviewed, there was about six persons on the panel. Now, from my experience, I've never had um, more than two persons, so to speak, on a panel interviewing me. So after the bat, seeing about six persons on a panel may pretty much just surprise you, yes? So you want to build that in mind. So when you jump on, I ask you is to tell you a little bit about yourself, right? And telling them about yourself, you, you know, you, you just basically want to really coin it around um, a few things, right? So you want to coin it around, all right, um, your school, the things that you have been doing at school, uh, your leadership roles, some of the things that you're passionate about, right? Um, your end goal. So for me, you know, I would have expressed that, all right, I, I, am, I believe in student leadership. I believe in volunteerism. Um, what I have done during uh, my time at college, I would have um, established uh, two clubs, right? Both a Circuit K and an Optimist Club to really drive um, volunteerism because I understand the importance and not only that it really, you know, gives persons opportunity to volunteer, but as well, it, it provides opportunities for your personal growth and development. You learn leadership in volunteerism. You, you, you find your passion, just like myself um, in media and production. I found my passion in, in volunteerism at college, right? So it may can just happen for you just the same. Yes, yeah, so you want to kind um, the whole the whole question about tell me about yourself within that, that, that whole space, right? About school, your leadership roles, your passion, and your end goal. What is your end goal? Now, when I finish this bachelor's degree here at GC Foster College, my aim is within 10 years time, which I am trying to find out how can I make my 10 year goal probably become way less. Um, my end goal is pretty much go back to Montego Bay, build a multi-purpose um, facility that that have um, you know all different sporting disciplines up to about twelve sporting disciplines because I learn about everything at school, yes, and as well integrate it with um, technology. Same, right? So that's that's one of my major end goal, getting my bachelor's degree here at GC Foster College, right? Um, another thing you would want to have an understanding of when they start to ask you question, you know they may ask you why you want this scholarship yes so you know that you would highlight your financial need you know um they may ask you you know what's your financial status um how are you being funded how who is assisting you have you applied for any additional scholarship have you taken a student loan just the same and if not why haven't you taken a student loan so you want to have even a response to that as well because of course you know when you actually say yes you have applied to other scholarships just the same and yes you you would have um had applied for student loan it then shows the the persons that are the donors the persons that who are interviewing you that hey you are serious about this you really want the assistance so you're going you know out and beyond to really see the spot the scholarship um needed right so that is something that you definitely would need to think about um mind you that your responses as well the the, the donors right the interviewers as well can basically um play on the the, the responses that you would have given right so if you respond you know something may they may probably ask you who assist you financially and you know you would say your mom you know they would probably ask you what 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 is the occupation of your mom you know what's what's her salary like who else in the family support you uh, going to college just the same yes so 
bear that in mind as well that they may also feed off your response um, personally. Um, I would say as well, as I was expressing earlier that try your best to pretty much get prepared, get in preparation mode. If you know that you are a person that is afraid of interview, nothing is wrong with you know grabbing a friend or a mentor or somebody to, to really ask you some questions, to really give you um, that level of confidence jumping into the, the interview, all right? Um, so pretty much don't freak out, you know? Try to really get going to that interview with that momentum. And of course, I will tell you this too, right? Ask questions, prepare some questions going into the interview as well, right? To show some form of interest, um, anything specifically that you wanted to know, anything you believe you should know, you can definitely ask them. And as well, this is a bonus for me. I would ask as well, right? To show that, you know, you, intentionally want to even assist you can ask them about hey do you have volunteerism um voluntary uh services available right so you can basically you know positively give back wherever you can right to their organization seeing that they're trying to help us the students who want uh scholarships all right so those are some of my um tips pretty much chris as it relates to what to expect in the interview and what my experiences, you know, were like uh, all together um, throughout the whole interview process. Thanks. You're, you're muted, Chris. Yes, then. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you taking the time to come speak to us tonight. I know we're, we're short at time, so um, I really appreciate you and keep up the good work. And we'll look forward to working with you to at least give some more kid students some more insights. All right. Awesome stuff. Much appreciated, man. All right. Good, good. All right. Yes, Uncle Rich, what do you want to do? You want to do another one or we have to close off? Hello? Uh two 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 things. <clears throat> you hear me out? Yes. Or two things. Let you, you had said earlier you have um, Rashi to speak. Yes. All right. So I know Rashi is not um, a big talker. So <laughs> I, allow, I allow her to do her two minutes. And then there, there are some questions that were asked earlier that's going to go to them before we close off. Sure. And, and if it is that we, we need to use part of next week, to address anything that is outstanding, we are flexible because at the end of the day, we want to add value, all right? So we're just going to spend um, about five more minutes into the AWC Youth and Expression time. Marva, Amanda, asking your permission for five minutes in your time. <laughs> going to take Roche, and then we'll answer those, those three questions. All right, good evening. Can you hear me? Am I being heard? Okay, all right. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, apologies again for not being able to turn on my camera. Um, but um, I just want to encourage you guys like um, to just do it, you know, just apply, guys. It might seem um, discouraging and daunting because the amount of stuff they're asking for, like essays and stuff, but I just want to encourage you to do it. I'm going to give a little testimony about um, me receiving a scholarship. So I remember searching the internet for possible scholarships I could apply for because student loans alone would not be able to cover my school fee. Um, as Chris alluded to um, earlier, I am doing a law and that is quite expensive and my local money can cover all of my law tuition, right? So um, I just, so I went on UWE's website. Um, I did not know that UWE offered scholarship. I saw it on Scholarship JA Instagram that they offered scholarship. So I went on the website, I print the form because on UWE website, um, specifically, I don't know if um, the other faculties that do this, but UWE um, for law, they have like one form and you 
five scholarships that you would want, you put it down and, you know, basically apply for those five scholarships on that one form. So I did um, a print of the form and have it in my house. And I was like, you know what, I know I'm about to do this because I have to go for UE. I think this was around COVID time. So, you know, to come out of your house and then go up there and then apply. It was, I was just kind of discouraged not to do it, but then something was telling me to just apply so I just applied and I went up there um, mind you I did go there on the last day so near the end of near the deadline on the day of the deadline I went up there I'm not encouraging anybody to do that <laughs> this film I do not do that um, but you know I went up there and I just say you know what let me just apply I put on the five scholarship that I screenshotted that I wanted so I write it down and I just left it in the box and I leave it um, um for me <laughs> I don't like disappointment so I did not have much expectations for it and so I just put it in the box and I leave it and I went home couple um a month passed I think and you know, I didn't hear any word from it. So I'm like, okay, I never get it. And then only if I see an email come to my email um, telling me that I was shortlisted for a law firm scholarship. So a law firm that I had um, written down on the forum said that they want they short they shortlisted me. So um I was to be prepared, I was supposed to prepare for an interview. No, um, if anybody knows me, I don't like interview. I don't like talking. I don't like public speaking. I'm not good at any of that. And it's so ironic because I'm doing law, but I don't, I, I'm not good on public speaking or interviews. So um, I think somebody encouraged me to message Chris. I think that was the first, um, around the time that I first met Chris and I messaged him. Um, Zane talked about having a mentor to help with preparation, guys preparation is important because um, I remember Chris just giving me some questions that they might ask and we just you know kind of went through how I would answer the question and you know just to be more comfortable um, with questions that they might ask in the interview and really preparation is important because can I tell you that I went into the interview I was nervous you know but I went into the interview and after the interview was finished I was so content I was you know content with the interview interview because it was I felt like it was one of if not the best interview I've done so preparation is very very important and I went um after coming out of the interview a couple of days passed and I got an email saying that unfortunately I did not get the scholarship. I was pretty bummed out about it, but you know, I was still you know content because I know I did I did my best. <laughs> I did my best. Um, couple of days passed, and I got another in another email saying that I was you know, accepted or they accepted me for another scholarship. No, can I tell you that my God never failed me yet? This scholarship was worth more than the scholarship I was shortlisted for. Like, I don't think you hear me. It was more. So like, even though I never get that first scholarship, I got a second scholarship that was worth more. And although, you know, I would want the one from the law firm because, you know, a lot of benefits and stuff, but um, I think I knew that I needed the money. And, and so to give me the one with the more, the more um, were worth more was very, very, I was very grateful for that. Um, but there's more. So a couple of days passed again, and another email from the same lady saying that I have been or, or I'm receiving another scholarship. No, can I get an amen? I was so um, I was so surprised. I feel like because it was the best interview I did, they liked me and they gave me two scholarships. And um, yes, yeah, so I, in that one interview, got two scholarships. So just encouraging you guys, you know, no matter how you feel discouraged or, you know, it, the process just seem long, just do it because you may never know what can happen. So yes, my little testimony, thank you. Boy, yeah, Chris, it looks like you need to have a part three, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, 
Well, that's what we're here for, man. And we, I guess students will always get encouraged when other persons do, who did it can speak. So I know we're short of time, but I saw our special guest, Zane, had his hand up. So I don't okay. know if we can give him 30 seconds. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Chris. And just to allude to, 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 to what um, my sure. friend just, yes, actually expressed, that as well, I want you guys to understand, have a mindset for this, right? You see, once you get an email or you apply for a scholarship and you don't get it, just having the back of your head say, all right, somebody better I was going to get it. You understand? Somebody needed it more. And and don't, 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 don't kill up yourself about it. Yes. Just just keep a, 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 a calm mindset, a positive mindset, because I had an experience just like that, Chris. You understand? We're I, I, I applied for a scholarship. I so wanted that scholarship because it was like 800 US, I think it was at the time. And I'm like, I got an email saying that I wasn't, I, I was, I didn't get the scholarship. And I'm like, oh man, somebody else would have, you know, miss needed it. So boom, a day after I got another email, hey, we got some more funds and you are now eligible to get the scholarship. And I was like, whoa, you know? And another thing that, that Russia had, had express that they love their interview always going the interviews and remember that first impression counts yeah. you understand yeah. your energy your positivity your vibration you go in that interview more so if you're the first person that was interviewed everybody would have to come now and match your energy your positivity your vibe so so somebody have to come really good to really you know get get the, the 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 interview um get an edge of the interviewers all right so you know just that's just my two cents so have a positive mindset and remember first impression codes yes thank you thank you Zane. thank you very much really appreciate that all right quickly you you're gonna do some rapid answer <laughs> rapid one two <laughs> one two bum, 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 bum. the machine gun uh, answers Okay, I think um, Kieran Green asks, what is the best scholarship for computing students? Best scholarship is the scholarship you win. Chris, you heard that? Yes. The best scholarship is the scholarship Chris? you win. Oh. Are you hearing me? Uh, yes, you're, you're froze up for me a little while. Go again. Oh, sorry. I was saying it's always start with the best scholarship is the one that you win. So computing comes on the STEM. So S-T-E-M, MS, the Ministry of Science and Technology, NCB Foundation, um, Betting Gaming and Lotteries Commission, Digicel Foundation. I, um, um, those are just a few that open up to you and also from your school. Okay, Jerome had asked a similar question. He's computer science at UTEC, so that already answered. Um, what plus, are the plus, best? Sorry, plus yeah. the UTEC website, the UTEC has upgraded your website now that you can see the scholarship more accessible like the UA website. So always go to the UTEC site also. Okay, good. Um, Shivani Cleary, Ask uh, so what are the best scholarships for students who want to go overseas, not you or you take? The best overseas scholarship is the one that you win. Secondly, the CCRIF, <laughs> CCRIF, Caribbean Catast Catastrophe uh, Risk Insurance, something. That one is the best one you can also get. And also check out the embassy. If you want to go overseas, you must know what you want to study and where you want to go. You want to go to Mexico? Start with the Mexican embassy. You want to go to, say, um, Germany? Start with the German embassy. You want to go to the U.S.? You have the Rhodes Scholarship. You have the, the Ministry of Finance Scholarship and Assistant Unit. Okay. Um, the, the others, I think you will have addressed already, so I won't bother to, to share them. If there are any questions that you have, for Chris or generally for the Adopt a Youth Foundation, send us an email at adoptayouthja at gmail.com. Adoptayouthja at gmail.com. Or you can send a WhatsApp message to 
8405306. Thanks again, Chris. This has been a great day, great night, good information. Next week, Friday, we'll be back here for another professional personal development session. And um, if you still have any needs from tonight's session, contact us. We are more than uh, that number. That number is not mine. <laughs> okay. All right. We have, we're more than ready to help you. I'm going to hand over now to Mavornin Edwards and Amanda Lawrence, who are the leaders for the AWC Youth in Expression. Good night, everyone who came on for the Dr. Youth session. Thanks for coming. We'll see you again next week, Friday. Thank you, Uncle Richie. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Um, I know we're off to a bit of a late start, but thank you so much for coming on. If you're from the AYA Foundation, you don't have to leave just yet. Trust me, you're in for a treat. Welcome to the AWC Youths in Expression. We're a group of young people that love to have fun, full of vibes, love God, and love growth and development and we find a way to make 